Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the, it's a welcome back there. Welcome to the Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church's in-person and online worship. Whether today is your first time here or you've been coming for years, we are so glad that you are with us. My name is Terry Grover. My pronouns are she and her. And I am co-chair of the Holiday Artisans Fair this year. We are growing a community that transforms lives through the power of love. Our mission calls us to celebrate diversity, encourage spiritual growth, and promote social responsibility while we travel on and care for the earth. A special welcome for those at home joining us on Zoom today. If you're attending for the first time, please do go to our website and fill out the welcome card so we can know a little bit more about you. Okay, and the only announcement that I have is for the Holiday Artisans Fair, since I'm up here, I get to do that. Um, after the service um, today and every Sunday between now and the fair, which is Saturday, December 2nd, the weekend after Thanksgiving weekend, we will have our sign-up board in the foyer for you to visit us and see what you can do. Oop, did that just turn off? And um, if you would pay attention to the insert in your order of service in the eBlast article so that you can know what kinds of things you should be working on to donate to the fair. That would be just wonderful. Now we invite you all to take this opportunity to silence your cell phones so that we can be fully present to one another. After the service, please do grab a cup of coffee in the kitchen window and stay for conversation in the foyer or back in here. It might be raining outside, so maybe not outside. We encourage you to find somebody you've never met before and introduce yourself. And those on Zoom will, of course, stay on and connect with one another. Let us center our hearts and minds with the ringing of the chimes. Good morning, congregation. Good morning. After the week we have had, I am so grateful that we are here, that we are here together. I have been holding you really close this week. If you're new to us today, I'm glad you're leaning into spiritual community in this time. My name is Reverend Tara. I use the pronouns she, her, and they, them, and I am the transitional minister here at Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church. Whatever you carry today, whether it be grief or trauma, numbness, fear, disconnection, a sense of relief, rage, 
or something else entirely, please know that all of it is normal. All of it is welcome here. Today we gather following the 567th mass shooting in the United States this year, and the deadliest mass shooting in the United States this year. The deadliest since the Uvalde school massacre in our own beloved community. 18 people were killed, 13 people are injured, and we all bear the effects of this kind of tragedy. Some of what that looks like is that this order of service is not completely accurate anymore, because when things change, things change. So just bear with me. This morning we will read the names of those murdered. We will honor other loved ones beloved to us who have passed away. We will light candles and sing and pray. You might cry. I might cry. You might hold the hand of the person beside you. You might take a break and watch the children trick or treat the principals, or walk outside for a breath or two or three. Those of you on Zoom might turn your cameras off or go right ahead and be a hot mess where everyone can see you and hold you because you are loved. All of which is to say there is no right way to be this morning. Come as you are, just as you are. We need one another. Come, my beloved congregation, let us worship together. As we light our sanctuary chalice this morning, those worshiping at home are invited to light a chalice or a candle near you to connect us to one another. Our chalice is a reminder that in hard times, our ancestors in faith acted with courage to bring hope and safety, to bring life itself to threatened people. We light it today as a reminder of who we are called to be in a world still dangerous and despairing. With courage and faith, we bring ourselves to the work that is before us. Our opening hymn this morning is number 53 in your gray hymnal, I Walk the Unfrequented Road. Dale will play it through once and then will rise in body or in spirit and join our voices in song.
At this time, I'd like to invite our candle lighters to come forward, and you can sort of just make a line up here. No particular order. I will read the names and ages of those who were killed in the mass shooting on Wednesday night. Their photographs are in front of the memory tree on the joys and sorrows table. For each life lost, we kindle a flame of love. So. Ronald Morin, 55. Peyton Brewer Ross, 40. You can put them back. You can put them back on the tray. Do you want us to go sit yeah. down? Joshua Seal, 36. You can go sit down. Brian McFarlane, 41. Joseph Lawrence Walker, 57. Arthur Fred Strout, 42. Max Hathaway, 35. Stephen Vazella, 45. Thomas Conrad, 34. Michael Delorier, 51. Jason Adam Walker, 51. Trisha Asselin, 53. William Young, 44. Aaron Young, 14. Robert Violet, 76. Lucille Violet, 73. William Frank Brackett, 48. Keith McNear, 64. Let us take a breath together. And let us close this ritual of candle lighting for those we have lost with the words of my dear colleague, the Reverend Linda Susan Ulrich. Spirit of grief, hold our shattered hearts as we attempt to comprehend the incomprehensible. Spirit of compassion, hold the mourning families when despair threatens to overwhelm them. Spirit of rage, 
hold our elected officials accountable for their reckless inaction. Spirit of love, hold us and show us a new way forward. Amen. Hear these words of prayer when you meet someone deep in grief. When you meet someone deep in grief, slip off your shoes and set them by the door. Enter barefoot this darkened chapel, hallowed by loss, hallowed by sorrow. Its gray stone walls and floor, you, congregation of one, are here to listen, not to sing. Kneel in the back pew, make no sound, let the candles speak. Let us spend a few moments in silence reflecting on this prayer and the prayers inside of each of us that call to us this morning. Blessed be. I have two readings to share with you this morning. The first is by the Irish poet Padre Otuma called Narrative Theology Number One. And I said to him, are there answers to all of this? And he said, the answer is in a story and the story is being told. And I said, but there is so much pain. And she answered plainly, pain will happen. Then I said, will I ever find meaning? And they said, you will find meaning where you give meaning. The answer is in the story, and the story isn't finished. and a second reading by Jeff Foster. He writes, you will lose everything. Your money, your power, your fame, your success, perhaps even your memory. Your looks will go, loved ones will die, your own body will eventually fall apart. Everything that seems permanent is absolutely impermanent and will be taken. Experience will gradually, or not so gradually, strip away everything that it can and that it does. Waking up means facing this reality with open eyes and no longer turning away. Right now, we sit on sacred 
and holy ground. For that which will be lost has not yet all been lost. And realizing this is the key to unspeakable joy. Whoever or whatever is in your life right now has not yet been taken away from you. This may sound obvious, but really knowing it is the key to everything. The why and how and wherefore of existence itself, impermanence, has already rendered everything and everyone around you so deeply holy and significant and worthy of your heartbreaking gratitude. Loss has already transfigured your life into an altar. May it be so. And at this time, I invite Terry up for the introduction to the offertory. We are freely gathered, open, and welcoming faith community, supported by your contributions. Each week, one-third of our offering is given away to a nonprofit organization whose mission aligns with our Unitarian Universalist principles and values. This month's Share the Plate recipient is MUSAN, the main Unitarian Universalist state advocacy network, which is a statewide advocacy and public policy network anchored in the UU faith. You can find more information in your order of service. Donations can be made now as the basket is passed through the donate button on our website or if you are a member on Breeze. If you're giving through Breeze, please note the donation is your pledge or a gift to our Share the Plate. If you are visiting us for the first time this morning, please know that your presence is your gift to us. At this time, our offer, offering will be collected and gratefully received.
sons of great bishops with sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the begin this morning by sharing words of reflection by our contact at the UU Trauma Response Ministry, who I've been in touch with throughout the week, Reverend Susan Carlson. Our congregations exist to care for one another, especially when there is the kind of profound hurt that people are feeling right now. The best of any religious community is when it cares for one another and then extends that care and compassion in ever widening circles outside these doors, beyond our own hearts and the wear and tear that our souls undergo. When members of a congregation experience a trauma or a loss, the kind of stinging assault on the heart and soul of the people, there may be a tendency to push it aside, to minimize the hurt, to be strong and move forward. I want to help you acknowledge that something is happening here. We name that this week has been a horror that we have lost neighbors and that many of us have been shaken to our very core. Lives have ended too soon and violently in our own neighborhoods. And people will have different responses and different ways to cope with the events of this week and the myriad of feelings that follow. This week has been traumatic for some of you and not for others. Grief and loss brings up other times of loss and sorrow, like when somebody else you loved died or disappeared from your life. Maybe you remember times when you felt vulnerable and afraid or overwhelmed because incident after incident came in rapid succession and you found it difficult to cope. The news assaults us every day with mass Murders, killings in congregations and houses of worship, grocery stores, bars on the streets, targeting people of color and Jewish people, queer people and loved ones. There is a steady assault on our heartstrings. And today, we take the time to talk about managing this stress and this grief and acknowledging what is happening in our lives. David Brubaker, an organizational and congregational consultant, writes that there are two kinds of congregations after a trauma or critical event has occurred. The trauma-informed congregation acknowledges what is happening to folks in our community. 
They help one another with their myriad emotions while sustaining relationships and encouraging self-care. A resilient congregation goes a bit farther. They stick together. They find meaning in rituals and sharing stories which help them to find their way to resilience. They work at building trust among the leadership, members, and friends. They encourage one another to get additional help if they need it. And it is with this commitment to naming the pain, remembering how you coped and dealt with difficult things in the past, that you sow the seeds of resilience. And we are sowing those seeds today. My job this morning is to remind you about what you already know. It is clear, and I think Unitarian Universalism in general affirms this, that people are naturally resilient. People are hot-wired to make it through a tough time and to come out the other side. We are more likely to heal and transform our lives if we have others who are there to catch us, listen to what weighs on our hearts, and be present when the fabric of our tender hearts break. The beauty of a congregation like this is that you have leadership who value the people who call this place home. You are courageous enough to show up today, to listen to one another's stories, and hear one another's pain and joys. And you are here for the generations, from the youngest ones among you to our youth, and all the adults from millennials to elders. Tragedy impacts people. Immediately following an incident, sure, of course, but there is a life cycle of disaster and its aftermath. After the incident, there may be a time when there is lots of energy and a desire for action known as the rescue or heroic phase. Then comes the honeymoon phase where the community rallies together. They come together. People have shared from a deep place and they feel that the worst is over. For some, then there is a disillusionment phase, and it can be difficult when the supportive response from others dissipates and feelings of abandonment may occur, like, why are you happy when I still feel so full of grief? Other people can think we should be over it and moving on. It can be a lonely time. And then there's a reconstruction phase, a time of new beginnings, and Congregations like ours have worked through a lot of our grief and anger and loss. And of course, as we all know, there are those anniversaries, memorials, other similar events can reignite feelings of pain again. It doesn't fully go away. Yet, there can be a time for new beginnings. And I am encouraged by the reminder that we are not alone. This congregation is part of something larger and deeper than our congregation alone. At times like this, we are surrounded by a vast network of love, care, and compassion. We are held in community. I want to share with you now a few words by Zen priest, author, and poet, Zenju Earthland Manuel, she writes about falling apart, and it really touched me this week. She writes, if you are still holding up, trying to meditate, I invite you to fall down. Fall down on the earth. Come down on all fours and greet the darkness that reeks of death, reaches out its desperate hand and asks to be loved as much as we love the light it gives. Let loose shame, rage, guilt, grief, pain, and make a river of it." End quote. Make a river of it. Even if you don't quite know or understand what it is, 
because it, too, is asking to be loved. If you have nothing to say, she writes, now is the time for the deeper silence, honed that does not apologize or seek something kind to say. There's a miracle in all of this. The miracle is that in the river of grief, in the darkness of life, in the silence of our loneliness, we are sustained by our faith. We are sustained by our faith, a faith that reminds us that love is present, that we are not alone. So this morning, this week, whenever it is that you need, I invite you to slip off your shoes, kneel in the back pew, and to let the candles speak. Amen. In a few moments, Dale will begin to play. You may choose to take this time for silent meditation, reflection, or prayer at your seat. You may choose to bring up a photo or memento of a loved one in your life to our memory altar, which is on the joys and sorrows table. You may choose to drop a stone of concern or grief in the bowl of water at the back of the sanctuary near Troy and say a silent prayer. Or you may choose to come forward and spend a moment with the candles lit for those lives lost in Lewiston this week. Zoom worshipers are invited to share names or memories in the chat or take this time for breathing deeply and for rest. Friends, this is your time. All things are now ready. We will share in a responsive litany to bless these beloveds who have gone before us. 
take a look at the beauty. It's amazing. I will read a line and your response in unison will be, we remember them. Let's practice. In the rising of the sun and in its going down. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer. In the rustling leaves and in the beauty of autumn. In the beginning of the year and when it ends. When we are weary and in need of strength. When we are lost and sick at heart. When we have joys that we yearn to share. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are part of us as we remember them. May it be so. Our closing hymn is number 96, I Cannot Think of Them as Dead. Dale will play it through once, and then you're invited to rise in body or spirit as we sing together. service to a close, I share with you these words from Frederick Buechner. Memory is more than looking back to a time that is no longer. It is looking out into another kind of time, all together where everything that ever was continues not just to be, but to grow and change with the life that is in it still the people we loved, the people who loved us, the people for, who, for good or ill taught us things, dead and gone though they may be. As we come to understand them in new ways, 
It is as though they come to understand us. And through them, we come to understand ourselves in new ways, too. Friends, as we go from this place with tender hearts, I invite you to be gentle with yourselves and to be gentle with one another. Reach out. Don't be alone if you feel alone inside. As Dale plays the postlude, I invite you, you know, maybe take a couple of quiet moments while he plays, and then as we wrap things up, you're invited to come forward and see this incredible memory remembrance altar that we have created together. Say a prayer, take a breath. We got this. Our worship has ended, and our service begins. Go in peace.